Hi B everyone, welcome back to the Should I Go to School series for sports management. Today we're going to be talking about the University of Oregon. Alright, five schools, five weeks. We've covered the University of Florida and Temple University. You can find those videos on this channel. Today's University of Oregon and upcoming is St. Louis University and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Alright, let's jump right in. Career swim lanes. Sports Management 101. This was covered in detail in the previous two videos, so I'm going to kind of fly through this. And make sure you can see that slide there. Okay. All right. Here's the type of careers you can have salaries. All right. Our categories and school ranking process. Just as a reminder, there's seven categories that we created together. Um, the ones with the yellow plus sign are, are more heavily weighted and they're more important to you, um, which includes location and travel, program focus and requirements, and internships. All right, University of Oregon is in Eugene, Oregon. It's a public school, 16,400 students. There's an 84% acceptance rate, uh, 58 to 74 percent graduation rate depending on if it's four, five, or six years. It's 58 percent for uh, graduating in four years, up to 74 percent graduating in a total of six years. The application deadline is January 15th of your senior year and uh, it received several good niche ratings, overall A minus, A for academics, diversity, A plus for athletics, A plus for professors, Student life's an A, campus is an A, party scene's an A+, plus. location, dorms, and value are, are in the B's, campus food is an A+, plus, and safety is a C+. Plus. University of Oregon ranks um, number 10 in the country for most liberal colleges in America. Best college food in America, 17, pretty good. Best college athletics in America, ranked 42nd. Best college for... Um, Party schools number 69 and best programs for architecture 51 in the US. Uh, several um, immunizations required uh, which is common in all colleges and those are listed there. Alright, location and travel all the way on the west coast from Wisconsin. Uh, it takes three, three and a quarter days to drive you know, $1,400 uh, round trip for you to come home for holidays or the summertime. Flying with a, with a couple of stops, you're looking anywhere from 700 to 1000 uh, bucks. Of course, with inflation and, uh, you know, transportation costs are, are, are rising pretty quickly. So this could come down, could go up, but most likely will come down. Uh, you know, this, this $1,400 round trip accounts for the type of vehicle you drive and, you know, two nights in a hotel, 88 gallons of fuel at five bucks a gallon, and some food. All right, cost and funding. So, the University of Oregon um, is, is part of the, the Montgomery GI Bill. It's a public school, so the so the military sees you as an in-state student or will will pay the in-state rate and the university allows you to pay the in-state rate even though you're not an Oregon resident. So that is $13,857 per year. So, um, you know, if you were out of state, including tuition, housing, meals, and books, you were looking at $226,000 to go to school there. But with the GI Bill, uh, which we're very thankful for, in-state tuition, only is 55,000. In-state total with tuition, housing, meals, and books is 31,000 per year times four years, so 124,000 and some change, so it's about 100,000 cheaper um, to go to school there full-time in-state as an in-state resident rate versus the out-of-state. GI Bill covers all the tuition, uh, gives you a housing allowance, uh, which is more than enough. You do have to live on campus your first year at the University of Oregon. All right, we'll jump right into the sports management program. 
I do want to say in full disclosure, when we were talking about this college, originally um, we were looking at the sports product development degree, which is actually a master's degree. It's very unique. Um, and uh, But the undergraduate degree at the University of Oregon is basically a degree of degree in business with the Lindquist Business School with a sports uh, business concentration. So um, you're looking at one, two, three, four specific uh, sports business classes that you have to take in addition to a, a business degree. All right, Cornell University. Here are the here are the career goals. Here are some of the career fields that their sports business concentration uh, business majors go into. Now your 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 transcript will say you're a business major, either a bachelor of arts or bachelor of science. It will not say sports business on the actual transcript, but you can list it on a resume. These career areas that sports business concentration grads go into is is very synonymous with our sports management 101 slides from the beginning. All right, here's, uh, you were just kind of working backwards. We're working backwards from the bachelor's degree back towards some of the, uh, the pre-business requirements. So here are the upper level business courses that you have to take, there's 10 of them. Leadership and communication, business law and ethics, business strategy and planning, economic foundations of competitive analysis, financial management, Managing People and Organizations, Marketing and Management, Business Analytics 1 and 2, and Operations Management. Uh, besides the upper level business courses, you have 54 credit hours of general education requirements. You have 24 hours of non-business breadth requirement courses. Those can be, that can be a minor, it can be kind of a, a track that you create yourself with the, uh, the counselors there and 12 credit hours of global context courses and seven business courses from at least three business departments within the Lindquist Business School. All right, working backwards from there, here's a list of course offerings that cover your upper division elective. If you look, uh, it's hard to see on the slides, but I'll send these slides to you. SBUS is sports business, so when you take your uh, required four sports business classes for your concentration, they come out of this list here. There's some additional information on the uh, non-business breadth requirements. You can study language, you can complete a minor, or you can create your own uh, focus area or theme. So sustainability, for example. All right, more on the, uh, the business program. In order to get into the business school, you first have to complete, um, I think it's close to 75 hours of pre-business courses. And the, all the, all the pre-business courses are listed there. Intro to business, intro accounting one, accounting two, macroeconomics, microeconomics, calculus for business, so on and so forth. So basically you have to complete, uh, you have to make the cut to even get into the business school by completing all the pre-business requirements your first couple of years. All right, next is kind of what's unique about the sports business, pro uh, sports business concentration at the University of Oregon. I spoke with the director of the, um, the, the, the counselors there who help students with their degree requirements to map everything out um, and Oregon was the first sports business school in the country basically and their philosophy is um, majority of the focus in sports business is actually you know the business fundamentals and so they 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 believe that the best approach is to have students get a, a, a full business degree with a sports concentration um, and they have a pretty good business school. Uh, they also have a, an alumni network. You can see there, um, you know, students that have graduated there work for Nike and Adidas, Seattle Seahawks, Visa, USA Today, Trailblazers, etc. Uh, they also have an industry advisory board. 
uh, you can see who participates in that there. Uh, they kind of advise the program and say this is what's going on in the sports industry and this is what the students need to know and focus on. These are the trends. And so they keep their program up to date with what's happening in the, in, in the real sports world. They also have a Warsaw Sports Business Club, uh, which has a lot of networking opportunities, a lot of guest speakers, um, and that's a way that uh, you can network and prepare for your for your internship or your career, which we'll talk about internships here in a second. Okay, according to their website, they have game-changing internships. Um, what I learned by speaking with the counselors is, you know, it's it's an opportunity. It's not a requirement. Whereas University of Florida and Temple, it's an actual requirement. It's pretty much a full semester. Um, they have a pretty good network there at the University of Oregon, uh, and they help students prepare and find uh, an internship. They say internships are available with companies like Nike, Adidas, Portland Trailblazers. Um, and, uh, you know, when, when I did call the business school before I spoke with the director of student advising, um, you know, they didn't seem to know much about the internship. Um, so, but they said that most of the, uh, the sports business concentration majors do, do participate in the internship. But um, because it's not a requirement, because there's not a lot of information on it, um, it's really hard to assess it. But I, you know, I imagine that they have a pretty good network and they can help, help you find an internship. There's just not a lot of information on it. Available sports programs, men's sports at University of Oregon, exceptional sports programs there. Uh, for example, I know the 2022 uh, track and field championship will be held there in Eugene. Men's sports are baseball, basketball, cross country, football, golf, tennis, indoor and outdoor track and field, women's sports, acrobatics, tumbling, basketball, cross country, golf, lacrosse, soccer, softball, tennis, indoor and outdoor track and field, and volleyball. Uh, there are several uh, intramural sports listed there that you can participate in as a student. Um, you know, flag football, indoor soccer, volleyball, basketball. There's golf tournaments, spike ball tournaments, cornhole tournaments, tennis tournaments, trivia night. Um, and uh, dodgeball, floor hockey. Um, a, lot of, a lot of sports activities for you there either to participate in at the varsity level to watch the varsity level as a spectator or participate in as, as an intramural. Campus community life gets, gets a uh, rating of a B according to Niche. Um, safety gets a C plus rating based on, on crime on campus, local area crime rates and student reviews. 75% of students say they feel extremely safe and secure on campus. Do you have to live on campus your first year? Yes, you do. And close to 20% of undergrads are in college housing, so it's probably mostly freshmen. One second. Sorry about that. And I will say that this Niche says freshmen required to live on campus. No, however, when I look at the Oregon website, it said yes, so I need to deconflict that for you. In full disclosure. Conclusion University of Oregon, Mighty Ducks. It's not a traditional sports management undergrad degree. Sorry about that. One second. Back to the conclusion, sorry about that. It's not a traditional sports management undergrad degree. It's a business degree with the Lindquist Business School with a sports business concentration. Listed on your diploma is a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science. Um, it won't have the sports business concentration listed on there. However, your internship and your resume and the sports business classes you took there can be listed on your resume. Um, has excellent networking with the Warsaw Sports Business Club and an alumni network with ties to major sports businesses. Also has an industry advisory board that shapes the bus sports business program. 
Internships available with companies like Nike, Adidas, and Portland Trailblazers. It's an opportunity night requirement. I could not find much information on it. You're not really accepted into the program right away. Uh, it seems like you have to kind of make several cuts to get to the end state, which is sports business concentration. Uh, lots of pre-business and general education requirements. Um, so you, you know, you might not feel like you completely belong to the sports business program from the start. You, you know, you may feel like you have to continuously climb uphill to make the cut to even get in there. Um, and so, you know, on the, on the other hand, they have a really good business program. Um, you know, not, you know, not top 50, but, you know, top 100. And, um, so, you know, there's some drawbacks there. Has a unique and excellent master's degree program in sports product development, but you can participate in this program later and don't have to go to undergrad at University of Oregon to do that. You can do it online later. You can go as a resident student later, but uh, that's a really unique program they have, and that's initially what I thought their undergrad program was, but, you know, those folks work for Nike and, um, you know, with shoe development and, and uh, shoe marketing and uh, sports equipment, uh, pretty unique field there. Um, Lundquist School was the, was the nation's first sports business program, so they do have a lot of experience in this, this area. Um, and they get several top niche ratings, A grades for various categories. Exceptions are values, B plus, pretty expensive for what you get in their rankings, I guess. Uh, dorms get a B, it's safe to get to C plus. Uh, student ratings were 60% uh, above average and 40% rated University of Oregon average or below. So I basically went in there and I took a sampling, read several student reviews, and um, you know whether they gave an above um, average rating or they gave an average or below average rating, there were some common threads at all of those levels, and the common threads were the food there is excellent, and the sports business, uh, I'm sorry, the sports programs are excellent. Um, they also stated that the weather is rainy. Um, sometimes they, uh, many of them felt a little bit lost in the sauce, you know, because the advising may be uh, understaffed according to these reviews. Um, and also a lot of people commented on the University of Oregon is expensive. Uh, weather is generally cold, wet, or overcast in that part of the country. Uh, GI Bill covers all, um, but cost of living there is expensive. Uh, does cover your housing though and um, there is a higher expense cost for you to get home for the holidays or the summer compared to the other schools we've looked at 54 general education credit hours is required and that's the most so far in these uh, series of five schools so we'll see what's coming up next but it's the highest amount so you don't necessarily get right into the sports management program right away you have several uh, pre-business and general education requirements that you need to meet before you even get in, really get into it, get in knee deep into it. Um, so that's kind of that program focus. It doesn't doesn't really focus in until later. Um, you have to live on your campus the first year, um, according to the University of Oregon website. All right, here we go. The scoring again. This is a uh, this is subjective. You can change these scores how you how you see them, but based on everything we've talked about on this video, you know, um, here's how I would score um, these categories. So, school info and attributes: a three, um, pretty expensive. Uh, they, you know, they have several top rankings, but none of the rankings are in the areas that you're necessarily interested in. There are top 50. Um, um, Location, it, it, you know, it, it, location and travel, it gets a three. You know, schools in Missouri and Wisconsin got a higher weighting from you, and this is pretty, pretty far away on the West Coast, so it's more expensive to drive and fly to get home. Uh, cost and funding is, uh, gets a five because the GI Bill goes all the way and covers everything. Program focus and requirements, um, this got a rating of a three because of the highest amount of general education requirements we've seen so far. The fact that you have to make a pre-business, you have to make the pre-business cut to get into business school. 
um, and then the fact that the sports business concentration is not listed on your your diploma uh, and you only take you know you're really only required to take four sports business specific courses um, to get that concentration so the focus the program focus related to sports management gets a three internships I put three to four on there because um, it seems like Oregon is extremely connected to um, several um, sports teams and, and sports business focused companies and they probably have a really good network um, and so their internship although there's not a lot of information on it um, you could probably get a pretty good internship there and according to um, the director that I talked to of, of student advising she said that um, several of the sports business students do do the internship um, not one but two summers so but without a lot of information, I put a three to four in there. Um, available sports programs, get to five, exceptional, uh, varsity or intramural levels. Campus and community life, gets a four. Several of the students said there's a really good vibe there as far as camaraderie uh, related to the University of Oregon, Mighty Ducks and the sports there. Um, the food is exceptional. Uh, you know, it is a beautiful part of the country. Um, you know, but the uh, the dorms got to be the the safety got a C plus, um, and um, you know for for those reasons, it, it, it didn't score a five. But um, let's see. Yeah, so that's it. So so um, a little bit surprised on the degree. Um, however. Um, there's all your, your pluses and minuses about the University of Oregon Sports Business Program uh, from our research this week. And so I, I appreciate your time. And um, upcoming next week is video four of five for this series, and it's uh, St. Louis University Billikens. Take care. Bye.